Alright, Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Um, so we're going to answer um, question 1A for our lab up this week, which is on chapter 7. So alright, as you can see the diagram over here, and let's read the question first. Alright, in figure 7.1, it shows that three particles far away from any other objects and located on a straight line. The masses of those or these particles are MA for MA, um, particle A, it's 337.0 kilograms, and B is the mass for particle B, 615.7 kilograms, and MC, which is mass for particle C, 154.0 kilograms. So the question asks to find the magnitude and direction of the net gravitational force acting on particle A. So the first thing we need to do here is um, to list down our information, which is the masses and the, um, the distance between all the particles. So we have A, B, and C. Distance between particle A to B is 0 0.5 meters. And B to C is 0 0.25 meters, so A to C will be the addition of those two distance, which is 0 0.75 meters. So, alright, now we have to find um, the force, the gravitational force acting on particle A um, due to particle B and C. So, the second thing you need to do here is here is to label um, the direction of the force. So as you can see here, for FA, which is, um, let me write that down first, um, which is force on particle A by um, C is uh, to the right. The same as force acting on particle A by particle B, which is to the right as well. So we just have to um, label the direction which is to the right here. Now, after labeling our um, direction, we can find the magnitude of the force acting on the uh, particle A. So the first one, let's find um, FBA, which is force exerted by particle B on A. So um, the formula we are going to use here is the gravitational force formula which is equal to g mm over r square m is the masses and r is the distance between the two masses now we just write down the um, formula again or oh, n Remember that G here is a constant. So for our masses, we have two particles here. So the masses will be mass for particle A. And another one is mass for particle B. And the distance between A and B, we have listed down. So we just have to write it out, which is this one. Now we can... Um, plug in our numbers, which is G again, it is a constant, so it's 6.67 times 10 to the power of 11, negative 11. So the mass for um, particle A is 337.0. Three, three, and another one is uh, mass for particle B. 615.7 and now let's plug in the 
uh, distance between those two particles, which is 0 0.5 0 square. So, um, since both of the forces acting on particle A is to the right, our answer will be in positive. So, if you calculate this in your calculator, you will get 5.53 times 10 to the power of minus 5 newtons. So, for the second one, which is force exerted by particle C on particle A, which is FCA, write down our formula. So, the masses will be for mass um, particle A and mass particle C. The distance will be between particle A and C, which is 0 0.750 here. Plug in our numbers. One. 54.0 Now our distance and calculate it and you will get 6.15 times 10 to the power of 6 sorry minus 6 newton Sorry now, let's calculate the total forces acting on um, particle A on the x direction. So, so here, plus CA, just sum it all up. You will get 6.15 times 10 to the power of 5, negative, sorry, minus 5 newtons. So the direction would be to write that down. Our force has to have an arrow up here. So since it is um, the total force on Particle A, there's subscript A here. So the value of the force. Now we have to write in words the direction. Wait, don't forget the units. We just do D right. So let's continue to question B. As you can see here, I have this done the information. Now let's read out the question first. So, um, 120 kilograms of satellite is orbiting the Earth at an altitude of 190 kilometers. The radius and the mass of the Earth are 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 meters and 5.98 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms respectively. Calculate, number one, gravitational potential energy of the satellite. The second one is the period of the satellite. And the third one is the change in the speed of the satellite for it to break free from the orbit, never to come back. So let's do the first one. Oh wait, sorry. Let's list on our information first. So we have list down here. I have list down here the mass of the satellite mass of the earth, the altitude, which is the height of the satellite from the surface of the earth, here, and then the radius of the earth. So the first thing we need to find to answer number one is the distance of the satellite from the center of the earth. So we just have to sum up h 
here the altitude and r which is the radius of the earth and we will get um, 6.59 times 10 to the power of 6 meters now it says here you need to find the gravitational potential energy of the satellite and we know that the formula for the gravitational potential energy is equals to U, capital U, equals to minus G, which is gravitational constant, MM, which is, um, we can write out as the mass of the Earth, mass of the satellite, over R, which is the distance of the satellite from the center of the Earth. So you just have to plug in your information and you will get negative 7.26 times 10 to the power of 9 joule. So don't forget your, remember to put your negative here because it's compulsory. Now let's move on to the second question which is um, the period of the satellite. So to find the period of the satellite, we know that there's a formula for it, which is T equals to 2 pi square root R cube over GM. And the mass here is the mass of the Earth, not the satellite. Here is mass of the planet. So here it's going to be so a period of satellite is equals to you don't have to put S actually. So just T to pi r which is the distance of the satellite from the center of the earth plug in your information so i'm just gonna write it out again here so so you can see that this is the mass of the earth so plug in your numbers and you will get uh the answer <coughs> all right now let's move on to the last question so let me write it out in a different color. All right. Um, so we have to find the change in the speed of the satellite for it to break free from the orbit and never to come back. We have to find two different things here, which is the first one is the speed of the satellite in the orbit of the Earth and the speed it needs to escape the orbit of the Earth. So the first velocity we have, we are going to use the formula V equals to GME over R, where it is, this is the speed of the satellite in the orbit of the Earth. And the mass over here is the uh, mass of the Earth and the R over here is the distance from the of the satellite from the center of the earth so you can plug in your numbers and get the answer for this one for v and the second um, speed is the escape speed which is the speed the satellite needs to break from the orbit of the earth um, so for this one, we're going to use the formula 2 gm square root 2 gm over r. And again, this is the mass of the earth and this is the radius, sorry, the distance um, of the satellite from the center of the earth so now after finding those two speeds um 
we can find the difference between them to get our answer. Which is in meter per second. Um, if you have any question, please ask your lecturer. If there's nothing else, thank you.